This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Hello and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Grief, your fortnightly foray into fantastic facts, spirit science and half-remembered history. I am your host, as always, Chris the as close as you can get to a poached human. Uh, and joining me, as ever, is... Oh. No one at all. For the first time in the long history of this august podcast, I am, like a reverse Icarus, flying solo. So that means I finally get to do the podcast I've always wanted to do. That's two hours of facts about eels, the band, not the weird looking creature. What exercises grow your forearms the best and how many eggs is too many eggs? There isn't too many eggs, just eat lots of eggs. Uh, So this is not a regular episode. This is a bonus episode with what's the opposite of a best of? It's not worst of, but these are conversations that were cut from other episodes. Not because they weren't any good, although you, the audience, will be the judge of that, but I'm guessing it's the same sort of vaguely structured waffle you come to expect from uh, Cooking with Grief. Um, Now, these are just conversations that got cut out of the episodes for time and are presented here now as some delicious offcuts, the sort of uh, discarded offal of of our podcast. So please enjoy. Uh, In fairness, though, some whales are dicks. Well, actually, no. Dolphins are dicks. Whales are good. Dolphins are dicks. I was going to say killer whales are dicks, but killer whales are actually a species of dolphin. Yeah, they they should be called uh, like whale killers rather than killer whales. All right, here's something. Why does everybody always get surprised when Shamu, like or whatever, like murders like a trainer at Sea World when they're literally called killer whales? And also, you know, you've got an apex predator kept under the worst conditions and essentially mm. tortured. Yeah, and surprise, it doesn't happen more often. And th- yeah, I mean, th- those videos are horrifying where they like grab the trainer and then just essentially drown them so that they can eat them later. Mm-hmm. But it's, you think, well, you know, it's, it's the, sa- the same thing where like, where people decide that they need exotic pets so they'll they'll get a, a Bengal tiger and they'll go mm-hmm. like, oh no, they're, they're trained and then it'll come out, oh no, it mauled its face off. It's like, well, what the fuck did you expect? <laughs> you want a tiger in your bathroom. Exactly. Although I was thinking, right? So great white sharks are just, like, everyone is, like, instinctively scared of them. Hey, you look at a picture of a great white shark, and you see the sharp teeth and, like, just these giant, like, murderous fish. And it's, like, instinctively, like, there's, like, a fear response to it. Yeah. And yet you look at a killer whale, which is an even bigger apex predator with giant teeth and a brain smart enough to actually, like... You know, like have you seen like how they uh, use like if there's a seal on a bit of ice, like a group of them will swim towards it and then duck underneath it and use the uh, the wake to like wash the seal off the uh, ice. Yeah, and not only that, but they'll like if there are baby orcas nearby, they'll make sure they're watching so they learn how to do it as well. Yeah, exactly. And there's a video online uh, I've seen we. Uh, just been doing the rounds where like uh, <laughs> it's in like Sea World or something and the whale drops like fish off at the side of the thing so birds come to like eat the fish and then it just goes and eats the bird like it literally baits them (laughs) so you know so you've got this even bigger apex predator with huge teeth that is smart it's vicious like have you seen video like they play around with like dead seals and stuff like that like whack them with their tail for no reason yeah they'll just throw them around and yeah, you know. and no fear response whatsoever you look at them and you're like oh that would make a good like cuddly toy (laughs) They've got kind eyes, though. Yeah, that must be it. And, you right, know, the eye is the window it. to the soul, and shark yeah. eyes are... Cold and dead. I always preferred sharks as a child. I was such a weird kid. Like, I remember when all the other kids were like going on primary school and being like, my dream's to swim with dolphins. I was like, I want to swim with sharks. The teachers were just like, and here we have the uh, future serial killer <laughs> of the class. Let's put him on the list. For the record, I'm not a serial killer. Like, I just <laughs> I know that might be a suspiciously specific <laughs> denial. Yeah, I mean, has anyone ever campaigned harder 
<laughs> to, to say they're not a, a serial killer. And, you know, who who would freely admit to that? I don't know, I, I think there are definitely phases you go through. So it's like sharks is, is a big one for kids. Space or dinosaurs or, I don't know, maybe like cowboys. Crushing the... You know, and, you know. What were you going to say? Crushing the patriarchy. <laughs> I was going to say crushing your enemies. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's slightly more... Um, you know, up there with Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah, the, that's you know what the Mongolian kids go through a phase. Oh, I just want to be the new Khan. What were you even talking about? Whales, lonely whales. He should release a solo album because you can buy songs like whale songs, can't you? Literally. Yeah, but the thing is, people buy like CDs of whale songs because it's meant to be like relaxing. If this one is just high pitched screaming about how lonely <laughs> it is, it's like someone auto tuned Morrissey up. You know, and no one needs that. <laughs> Yeah, Although there true. have been so many sort of uh, shitty bootleg releases of the Smiths, then uh, people would buy it. And as ever, we started on one topic, and despite your <laughs> best efforts to bring it back, <laughs> I'm determined to talk about someone else. <laughs> My own personal grief with bootlegs of the Smiths. <laughs> <sighs> it's like how to use whales as a springboard to talk about Morrissey. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is, like, if if we sat down in advance and right for this next topic we have to start talking about whales and end up at Morrissey it's really hard to do but <laughs> if we just you know if we freestyle it yeah if we relax to you know uh, lonely screaming whale CDs then you know your mind relaxes and you're open to new ideas well I have nothing further to add <laughs> <laughs> the, the other day I had a dream right and uh, dreams in which my brain can fig- like can figure anything it was unlimited escape. I had a dream that I was bad at horseback riding. That's how boring I am. <laughs> that in my even in my dreams, have you I, ever have you ever ridden a horse? There isn't a horse big enough to carry me. <laughs> <laughs> They're strong beasts, but there's too. <laughs> it requires too much horsepower. But, it's like, but in my dream, I couldn't even be good at something I don't care about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is sad thing is tonally that's you can read the exact same sort of article in the telegraph in 2018 <laughs> about being eaten well not specifically about, about that but just this idea of you know civilization versus you know savagery to be fair that does go way back to uh all the way back to the romans in fact well, if not further. What well, Dickens but, uh, does? That's he's older than Dick- I thought. Yes, he's older than you thought. No, um, the Romans categorized everyone as either civilizations or barbarians, basically categorizing by whether or not you lived in a city or in villages, like as a general rule. So the Greeks were all, uh, were civilized because Greeks lived in cities, whereas like the Germans all lived in villages and huts and stuff so they were obviously barbarians it's i mean it's, it's a tricky one isn't it like sort of trying to what's to differentiate a sort of uh cultural racism of the time mm-hmm. and uh, like uh, although you can't judge romans by modern standards like i don't know what my point is here <laughs> <laughs> but this is definitely getting cut out I, I st- well, the Romans were surprisingly unracist in that they were they were like bigot, bigoted dicks, but not based on race. Well, like I say, based on whether or not you're a barbarian or whatever. So that was their main thing. Just going back to like 19th century authors, the weird one is, um, have you ever read Moby Dick? I have attempted to, but there is a lot of very specific language at length yeah. about... I'm not going to lie, I still haven't finished Moorings it. and, you know, particular types yeah. of knots. So I've tried it mm. and failed every time. Whereas, you know, Joseph Conrad, similar topic, but much shorter. Very much shorter. And also made a much better film in Apocalypse Now. Yeah, the surprisingly unracist but not exactly PC bits in Moby Dick, where he's, <laughs> it goes on about like it, it just casually goes on about how white people are better than everyone by virtue of being white and stuff like that. You know, it's like it's not PC, but it's surprisingly like 
there's all bits about respecting uh, the customs of the uh, savages because they have a good heart and stuff like that instead of being <laughs> it's like that weird thing where it's sort of like you're a savage but you're all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're one of the be- you, you're his- one of the better ones yeah, which for its day was probably like quite forward thinking. Instead of being like, there no hope. And like, oh yeah, well he can still be a good man in his heart even if he's not a Christian. Yeah, I guess, I guess for its time that is uh, is uh, oh, yeah, but, uh, that yeah, is quite neighbourly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's probably like a it's probably considered like a libtard, <laughs> Sno- uh, you know, snowflake <laughs> SJW. <Is> he- yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a. Obviously, cut this out if I don't think of anything. I'm trying to think of a of a pond that combines a shrimp and a a jazz player. Good luck. <laughs> Gen- <laughs> genuinely, the first thing I thought of was prawn Davis, which doesn't even work. <laughs> That's not a pun. It's not a play on words. It's just replacing the name with prawn. <laughs> I've just replaced Miles with prawn. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so yeah, that's me done on the topic of spy shrimp. Spy shrimp! Before we carry on, a quick word from our sponsor. Now here at Cooking With Grief, we've long campaigned for advertisers. And we've finally got one. So the ad for this episode is my bookie, an online betting website. So uh, sign up now and make your first deposit and you'll get a dollar for dollar match all the way up to a thousand dollars. And you'll also grab yourself a free entry into the my bookie super contest. Now to play in the contest, all you have to do is pick five NFL games against the spread to have a chance at a hundred thousand dollars guaranteed in cash prizes. And the best part is my bookie has thousands of bets to choose from. Uh, not only do you have the full slate of NFL games, you've got the NBA playoffs and the English Premier League. From live betting to championship features, every play you want to make is waiting at my bookie. It's simple: you make your picks, you win big, you collect your cash. So use the promo code GRIEF and not only will you double your first deposit, your friends here at Cooking With Grief will also get a slice of the action. Use promo code GRIEF, G-R-I-E-F, and double your first deposit right now. So your winning season begins today, but only at my bookie. Yeah, no, you just have to be a bit mental to do those like, type of stuff. Right? <laughs> no, just yeah. like, I'm just going to sit on this like, pretty much untested machinery and let's go either way you make history you just hope it's in a good way do you think within our lifetimes it will be a viable commercial way of transportation well this uh new new aircraft yeah i think so i mean well apparently the first idea of the technology actually was in the 1920s uh, but they dismissed it as like impractical (laughs) and witchcraft yeah so apparently the um first came up with the idea in the 1920s, the idea that you could charge air particles and they'd move. Uh, but they dismissed it. And, you know, they couldn't get any pr- progress. Then the team of researchers looked at it again in the 1950s and they f- realised you could make, you know, ionic wind. Great band. Yeah. <laughs> ionic wind and fire. <laughs> um, but you couldn't use it to uh, power an aircraft. And then MIT researchers now were like, Let's give it a go, and they managed to get it to work. So, you know, every every 30 to 50 years, they seem to have a bit of a, um, a leap. So, you know, it's all now about how much, you know, how to uh, generate enough charge to lift enough weight. Because at the moment, the aircraft only weighs, I think it says, something like two and a half kilos. So it's been a while before you can get some decent peanuts on there, but still exciting times ahead. Mm-hmm. It does say that the thrust to power ratio is comparable to that achieved by jet engines. Oh. So in theory, if you increase the power, which presumably would be more batteries, yeah, then you can increase the thrust accordingly, and it would scale. Would you, assuming it's free for a te- test run, the first commercially like m- like proper plane, let's say, like. I know London to New York, but on... would I go on the first ever one? Yeah, had it been tested without people? Yes. Yeah, maybe the tests were not successful. <laughs> then no. <laughs> <laughs> what about the moon? Like, there's always talk about. You would know... I go to the moon? Yeah, there are always talk about like commercial trips to the moon. I don't know, like, because on the one hand, like, I'm like 
amazed by space life. I honestly cannot believe that, like, you know, people somehow get bored of the idea that, that we send people into space. I say we as if <laughs> we had any hand in it. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, the idea that there's people in space all the time, to, like, doing stuff, and we manage to send humans there. And worms. And they survive. And worms. And, like, I do think it would be, like, like amazingly cool to actually go. But... <laughs> you are quite busy. No, I was just thinking, like, have you ever seen what, like, launch looks like? <laughs> like, you literally do just get, like, crammed into a tin tin can like with no room to move and it's just all looks very claustrophobic and again you're sat on thousands of tons of highly flammable yeah fuel it, it doesn't with lots of moving parts yeah i get so. i get quite anxious being on a crowded bus i don't know if i'll <laughs> i'll cope with that sort of and it's hard to get a long time in space <laughs> exactly did you ever see that program about 10 years ago where they tricked some people into thinking they'd gone to space yes <laughs> and so ends that subject. <laughs> um, for any dear listeners who uh, didn't see the program, uh, they they basically found a bunch of uh, fairly susceptible people, put them through a fake space camp, a uh, fake training camp, and then told them they were launching into space. And um, they built up a, like an elaborate mock up of a uh, of a, what do you call it, like the interior of the shuttle, and put some big screens around the outside so it looked like they could look in space, but told them they weren't allowed to go up to where the pilot sat because then you'd be able to actually see that there were just screens. It was What was interesting was the fact that, oh yeah, to get around the gravity thing, they just shook the, the fake shuttle a little bit when they got <laughs> to the out of atmosphere and said, that's the anti-gravity. Yeah, the gravity drive's kicking in. Um, but what was interesting was the fact that as soon as they all saw space or the world from you know, as they thought from space, they all like got very philosophical, more like, oh wow, like it puts all humanity into perspective and all that. And so it was actually like weirdly moving, and then at the same time, you were like, and you're also stupid for thinking you're in space. Although it was the uh, conceit of the show, obviously, it's not nice to trick people. Then mm-hmm. again, you think, who answers an advert saying, hey, you want to go to space, you know, <laughs> with a week of training? Yeah. Well, that was it as well. At one point, I think they were supposed to have flown to... Um, so not only did they trick them into thinking they'd gone to space, but I think before that, they tricked them into thinking they'd gone to Russia. So, you know, they did their training in, um, you know, in England. And they knew, you know, they knew they were in England doing all their space cadet stuff. And then they got on a plane to fly to Russia uh, so they could get on or Kazakhstan and actually, you know, get in the rocket to fly up. But all they did was fly in a circle and land back <laughs> where they'd set off. Just they were took them to a different set. Yeah, just getting um, I don't know the people. I think British people are accustomed to do bad accents. Hello and <laughs> welcome to Russia. But no, there's some other like because they've got like neighbours and in Amer- in Australia that's been going for you. Like I bet you the guy who's played Lou Carpenter has been doing that for ages. But not but none have toppled the moth because you need to. You know, yes, be a child actor going... in it. In it. <laughs> you have to be a child actor. I accept then... that <laughs> this moth is one. The moth is safe. We're not taking it away from the moth. As I say, and then in America, you've got uh, Days of Our Lives. That has also been going since. Is it still going? I think so. Like, honestly, <laughs> do it. I t- oh, no, was it Days of Our Lives? Or General Hospital, I think it was. I wrote an article on like, my only um, like creative work besides this podcast this shit yes exactly and the only one where i was actually like i genuinely got paid for this somehow i wrote about why either general hospital or days of our lives i think it was general hospital was darker than you remember despite the fact that i've never watched it well that's the beauty of the um, internet you can <laughs> yeah. just uh you know fake your way through Wikipedia anything. articles and somehow managed to get paid to write an article and i was just like this is the highlight of my... Unfortunately, that was about five years ago, and I've yet to do anything to top that, which is... Creatively, you've done other things. You've made... You know, oh, yeah. Don't, don't do yourself down, you know. You're a semi-functioning grown-up. Yes, I. that is true. I am still existing, and stuff happens on a daily basis. So, yeah, I am winning. Only today you had at least one meal that I know about. Yes, exactly. You, at some point, had socks on that you have now removed. Yes, that's true as well. It's all going fine, mate. I'm just trying to think of any other 
actors. I know, here's a fact. Uh, I think, hold on, as you might not be a fact. I was going to say, because Christopher Lee paid, played Dracula like a crazy amount of times, but obviously he lived to be like 90 something and also played like a million other roles. So, in terms of percentage of his life, probably not that high. Yeah, but I mean, I think films, obviously, films is different because it's, it's going to cut down the percentages. I mean, yeah, I think, you're right. It really I, has to be a daily. But in terms of films, would there be something like, what, what's the longest film franchise? Maybe like Fast and Furious? Are there any no, Fast and Furious films that have... Godzilla is the longest. Most sequels of any films, apparently. Really? Most sequels? Yes. Godzilla has oh. been going since like 50s, 60s? Right yeah, but I, uh, I, I thought there were only like a couple of films. I didn't know. Oh, God, no. <laughs> God, no. Godzilla, no. <laughs> You've got Godzilla, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, Godzilla vs. Mothra, Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla, Godzilla vs. King Kong, Godzilla Remake, Godzilla Remake again, the upcoming Godzilla vs. King Kong. Could you uh, argue that Pacific Rim are uh, spin no, it Yeah, it takes the same concept, but Godzilla's not in it. Um, it's Godzilla it's uh, Redemption, where he finds <laughs> a, his sensitive side. No, that's all I've got. It's too fair. You've got quite a lot. Like I, yeah. off the cuff t- to have that much, you know, uh, Godzilla, Godzilla knowledge in your back back pocket is. Uh, I'm not going to say impressive because it's absolutely <laughs> worthless. But I can't deny the the synapses it took to be able to get that information. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, you, ha- that's, you you you, that's me you have a wonderful pointless brain. <laughs> Thank you. And I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Like actively avoiding a moral decision for short-term mm-hmm. needs, but I suppose that's that's human nature. Not that that, that like hum- it being human nature is you know an excuse. In the same way that I probably morally like shouldn't support the tobacco industry, and yet for years I was a smoker, and quite a lot of my wages went to supporting mm. Philip Morris, but I was addicted to nicotine <laughs> and mm. that short-term benefit over, t- you know, <laughs> crumbled. I always find that weird. But you know what? You meet like, you know, like super ethical vegan people and but yeah. a lot a lot of them smoke. Do they? I find. I don't know that many super ethical vegan people. No, I, I wish I didn't. <laughs> the one thing I found, have you ever been in London? Well, actually, I've seen them in Manchester as well. Where they stand with the V for Vendetta masks and just stand there holding laptops and a few signs mm. showing about how meat is murder and all that. And it's like, I 100% get your point, but it is the cringiest way you could possibly get it across that you are converting absolutely nobody and hardening many people's opinion against it. Yeah. It's, it's always it's... like a bunch of like what seem to be about 12 to 13 year olds. You're really not actually doing your cause any favors by being so cringy. Yeah, but you've you've got to let people, uh, you know, do their thing in their own way, even if it absolutely <laughs> puts people's backs off and makes you completely <laughs> yeah. unsympathetic to their, yeah. you know, very good cause. But like, yeah, you know, like don't just stand there like with not saying anything. Engage people. Like you don't need the masks. Like the meat industry isn't actually coming for you. <laughs> We've had vegetarians for quite a long time now. Oh, I see. The man got to you. Whose payroll are you on? Well, uh, I don't know yet. Like, honestly, as we often say, Cooking with Grief is looking for sponsorship. <laughs> we nothing if not streamless. <laughs> and so, you know, George Soros, if you're listening, we'll take it. The Coke Brothers, if you're listening, we'll take it. Big but Pharma. Honestly... I, know, I know I just slagged off Philip Morris, but buy yep. Marlboro cigarettes. They are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, like Big Pharma will take it, any anti uh, corporation things, we'll take your money. Like, honestly, we don't care, just please. Do you work for the arms <laughs> trade? I some. love your products. Yes. Oh, I feel grubby now. <laughs> <laughs> grubby and loaded. <laughs> yeah. Wipe away the tears with uh, dollar bills. <laughs> I don't know why we've, you know, switched currencies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can also pay as an untraceable gold bullion. <laughs> Yeah, non-consecutive gold bars. <laughs> I bet that's a faff, though, trying to pay a your local corner shop in gold bullion. In gold, yeah. You know, you pop up, it's legal tender, mate, it's gold bullion, and you're trying to buy a pint of milk. <laughs> yeah, I don't have change for gold bullion. Oh, well, maybe it is better that we're, we're broke. 
Think of the poor billionaires <laughs> who can't buy milk with their bullion. Maybe it's them who have it hardest. I think you're not right. It's <laughs> <laughs> an odd way of saying that, but I know what you mean. <laughs> okay. So yeah, meat. I think we're done. <laughs> It's a hell of a conclusion. I hope your university <laughs> essays weren't as bad as that. <laughs> In conclusion, oh. meat! Exclamation mark. Vatican City does seem, if you read the Bible, which I did do as a youth, but not for a while, Jesus did seem pretty pretty keen on the whole not acquiring wealth, like too much wealth. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he you know kicked out the money lenders and, you know... yeah. If Jesus came back and he saw a city of gold palaces and all the all the insides of gold and mm-hmm. velvet, you've got to think it's it's slightly off message. Oh yeah, the Catholic Church though, as an organisation, I mean, I was actually went to Vatican City once, and whilst we were there, a bishop or cardinal or something was being arrested for embezzlement, um, so they've closed off some of the streets. But yeah, you go there and there's like, you walk into this huge, colossal cathedral that literally has like the size of other, like on the aisle down the middle, it has the lengths of various other giant cathedrals marked out just to really show how much bigger this cathedral is than all the other ones that you thought were big. It's like, you think St. Paul's is big? Nothing. You can see it. It's only halfway as long as this one. And then... You go walk in, there's gold everywhere, and then there's a collection box, and you're like, are you fucking shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're spending yeah. this on. <laughs> I can see what you're spending this on. It is not going to the poor. <laughs> it is going to yeah. more gold leaf. This is not the body of Christ. This is black salt caviar. <laughs> I mean, you can understand that if you're an illiterate peasant, and you know your ten previous generations have spent their entire lives as labourers and craftsmen building a church or a cathedral or whatever, then there is a level of... it's. It must be so awe-inspiring that you think, well, these guys clearly know what they're talking about because they, they read this book that we're not allowed to read and it told them to make this building, which is objectively the most impressive thing that I, a illiterate president, will ever see. Um, Fair even, if, even if literate, probably, it would probably be the best yeah. thing you'll ever see in... Even today, yeah. they're amazing. It's it's, it's it's a convincing argument that you think. Oh yeah. Again, going back to if I if we were billionaires, part of me would really want a gaudy like cathedral in my like you know just something really like megalomaniac. I thought you were going to say to start your own religion. Oh well, yeah, I could do that, but that seems like a bit of effort. I just want the trappings and the building. I mean, maybe maybe have like one room of your house done up as a. As a cathedral, or have a cathedral as <laughs> as your, house. your pa- bathroom, <laughs> and it's and and it, there's just like the, the you know at the pulpit there's just a toilet, and that's it. It's the only thing in the room. <laughs> well, I think it's though. It's like imagine the echo on that. That would be quite an echo. But you know, like that one in Barcelona that's like being built for like the last hundred years and it's still not finished. Well, they keep napping in the afternoon. It's why it's not getting done. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It just takes like. You know, if you like say it would literally take you ten generations of your family to like see this from start to finish. I made an absolutely sick one on The Sims once, it was amazing. Uh, <laughs> that is genuinely the highlight of my uh, architectural you, career. <laughs> you started off so against like the trappings of wealth and then you you talked yourself into it going you know, no, now no, that no, I you think see, about it. I'm only against the trappings of wealth whilst I don't have any. But I'm fully aware that as oh, soon right. as I am on the other side of the fence, I'll be, I'll be like, low, cap, low taxes, libertarianism for all. You sound like a Tory in the making. Like, <laughs> as soon as you win the lottery, I earn this money, it's mine. <laughs> yeah. I don't want it to pay for schools and hospitals. Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, so, what, you didn't work hard enough to happen to be born to the right family? <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you for being lazy. I think that's the uh, Republicans like party <laughs> slogan, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck you, you're being poor wrong. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, for, for a podcast that we decided was not, not going to touch polit- on religion and the political, <laughs> we've, we've laid our cards out. Yeah, you can probably read between the lines. 
or the lines. You could, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, because the line is just a sentence in bold text that reads, <laughs> maybe not keeping all your money to do stupid shit <laughs> at the expense of other people in your country is is maybe a bad thing. Maybe. Until, Until we get that money and, and then... then. We will then we will spend some of that money getting this episode erased from the internet's history, <laughs> and there exactly. will be no trace of us being hypocrites. And exactly. there will be you know a, a a new podcast called Cooking with Wealth, <laughs> and every topic will be about how great it is to have money. Exactly. Well, we'll put the world to rights. Yeah. Uh, Should we hit stop? Did you know that a man once jumped into a bulletproof window so much that he busted it out of the frame and fell to his death? I do. Hey, I'm Nicholas Howe, and I made an improvised comedy storytelling podcast about this death and many others. Using a multiverse of me's as the catalyst, I explore the various ways people have died. I also have special guests on and freak them out about how dangerous the world is. Did you know lakes can explode? You do now. Listen to the How Will I Die podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, and follow us on Twitter at HWIDIEPOD.